What's going on, y'all? I guess this is like an official episode of the traditional Thomist impromptu here on the Meaning of Catholic. It's kind of fun, kind of different, but we'll see how it goes. Never really hosted this setting, so uh, yeah, we'll see how it is. It's dangerous to put a guy behind the microphone, in my opinion. Don't you think, Tim? Especially You're a when guy, he's guy with a webcam. Oh boy. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Everyone is there. Pontificating, in the best possible exactly. sense of pontificating, I think. Pontificating with old... the pontiffs. That's what this show should be called. <laughs> That's pontificating so... with the pontiffs. If we did a series over like Acts of the Magisterium, that's what the title would have to be. Pontificating with the pontiffs. That'd be pretty cool. Um, my, I think my all-time favorite moment, I know I'm getting like somewhat sidetracked. We'll get back on show, but it's okay. I'm from the South. We get off track. My favorite moment, I think, from this Guild family stream was when Anthony Abate like messaged in and he said, that someone told him that he was in mortal sin for breaking the third commandment for working on his Marian garden. And you gave him more <laughs> <Yeah>. theology advice <laughs> from there. What's some, up, Roberto? Some anonymous person on Twitter. What's up, What's hermano? Up, Good to see you. Another Texan with you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Cavazos. Roberto, where are you from in Texas? That's that's my question. To get off with, uh, welcome everyone to the Guild Family Stream. Also, all my patrons over at patreon.com slash traditional Thomas. This is a series called Trad Disputed Questions, where we go into various disputed points of Catholic theology, very niche sections of kind of debated points in the tradosphere, if you will. This is a show that you can get, of course, access to on the Meaning of Catholic slash register, as well as patreon.com slash traditional Thomas. Go over to either one of them, support us out there, and you'll get access to all of these shows. So it's a recurring show going over various disputed questions. Today we're going to begin, I would say, kind of maybe a separate module, its own module over Ecclesiology, a subject in the church, in my opinion, that is exceedingly necessary to talk about. I would argue that ecclesiology is one of the root points of the dispute inside of the church at the moment, but it's one that's mostly in the area of academics. You don't see it really being talked about in common parlance with the laity. In common parlance, of course, we see people talking about the new mass and ecumenism and things like that, but we don't really see the discussion on ecclesiology. So I'm pretty excited to kick us off. And Tim and I come from pretty different perspectives when it comes to this, as all of the technical episodes we do. Um, I'll actually be curious myself to see how different we end up being in this. However, um, yeah, Tim, you come from a more Eastern Catholic perspective. If I had to give like a title for your particular view, would it would be considered as the Eucharistic ecclesiology? That's how you would kind of maybe define it or coin it. Yeah, I, I think uh, the, the the biggest influence we, we talked about how we wanted to Nicholas and Cavazos and I wanted to talk about, well, where, how do we come to our positions and our viewpoints? And, uh, yeah, I, I would consider my view to be an Eastern Catholic view, uh, often shared by many Eastern Catholics, traditional Eastern Catholics. There are actually kind of neo-modernist Eastern Catholics, believe it or not. Um, mm -hmm. But um, I, I would say I am an Augustinian, but Augustine doesn't really uh, influence my ecclesiological thought here, really. Uh, it's more of other, other factors. Um, so I think I, I spent years studying the first millennium ecclesiological debates basically over the papacy and at the master's level and basically Vatican II, that's the way that I see Vatican II is through the lens of the first millennium and the patristics and various debates that were going on regarding the papacy. And, but also regarding the various Greek schisms, um, extra, uh, veneration of saints that are not technically Catholic, never were in communion with Roman see, but yet they're venerated by the Roman see. Um, there's the, um, the baptism controversy, Pope St. Stephen back in the two hundreds that influences us, but Eucharistic ecclesiology is the big one. Uh, that's the big influence on me. So what, what are the main sources Cavazos that have brought you to, I know you're, uh, what would you call yourself? You're a, a rigid neo-scholastic, right? Yeah, rigid neo-scholastic that makes all the Kantians freak out in philosophy class. I would say my perspective comes from a, a very strictly Roman school of thought. 
And so my ecclesiology is very much so primarily affected by the theology. People will coin it as the manualists, but I would say it's it's broader than that. It's heavily influenced by Cardinals Below and Franzlin, Gergou Lagrange, Zappelena, De Groot, things along that nature. Um, a particular amount of my citations today will be coming from De Ecclesia by the Sacra Theologia Summa, which was a, a treatise of um, eight, well, technically and originally four, but That's now eight. the Spanish eight. one, right? The Spanish Jesuits? Yeah. Spanish right. Jesuits. Mystic Jesuits that were down there in the 1950s. And again, for all of the viewers who are like, oh no, why would you cite something from a Jesuit? Don't worry, these were the 1950s Jesuits, very different than our, our own day. And so th that's primarily where I'm coming from. And so I see the council primarily through the lens of number one, that, but then two, in the context of history, I've looked and I've read enough of, I would say two books, famously, of course, Ryan Flows Into the Tiber, um, I forget the name uh, Father Vilkin, I believe is his name, who is uh, yeah, Vilkin. Liberal. I don't Vilkin, know. Yeah. I think he's an American, so probably with Wilkin, I guess. But yeah, Ryan flows in the yeah. It's now republished as What Happened at Vatican II. Exactly. Yeah, I honestly like the old title better because I think it's a little bit more. Uh, it's a little bit more indicative of what was going on. But yeah, yeah Ryan flows. I have this old copy with a. This this beautiful hey. cover from 1970 or whatever it was. I was about to say, is that like a 70s edition? Smells yeah. great. I always smell smells, the old ones. <laughs> smells great. See, uh, 1978. 1978. There we go. 1978. All right. So that book, and then of course, I I'd be shocked if you don't have this book, Tim. But of course, uh, I think it's called uh, Inside Vatican II by uh, Roberto de Mate, right? Who is a personal friend Maybe. of um, Pope Benedict XVI. That's more of a conservative view of the events that took place at the council, whereas the former is a this liberal one? view. Mm -hmm. That book, exactly. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think it's put out by, uh, is it uh, Laredo Press? Something like Laredo, that? Laredo, yeah. Press? Yeah. Okay. And so, yeah, both are very good. And so I view the council also through that historical <laughs> prism, particularly that um, you see in the area of ecclesiology, particularly Henri de Lubac's thought is very much so embraced at the council in that area of ecclesiology. His, his views when it comes to not just ecclesiology, but also in parse and tandem with it, because it's closely linked, his views on the subject of revelation. And we'll get into this, I'm sure, more in maybe later episodes, but seeing both of you know that historical background, kind of contrasting this with the Roman school of thought is the world I'm coming from. And what, what sources from Henri de Lubac are your like uh catholicism I don't, i've never read a single book by de lubach like what yeah so what? the the famous one of course is sir natural where he actually does talk about this in the latter half of the book and not not a full-on treatise like you would see a, a scholastic manual but he talks about how this discussion on grace and nature what would be the effects in the context of the 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 universal church okay. one of them that he brings up and I, and i'll give i'll give two examples one of them that he brings up is the discussion on um i guess if you had to coin it like pitting the neo-scholastic or i would just say traditional understanding of the sources of revelation being two sources of revelation distinct scripture and tradition fonts of revelation pitting that against this idea that revelation is primarily god revealing himself to man so it's more of a um of an experience orientation as opposed to a set of dogmas and doctrine and things along that nature that would be my first example and then the second example would be uh his understanding of particularly in this area of the church where it's the idea of the church being the famous of a sacrament right the church being a sacrament a sacrament of unity and things along that nature which i think deserves its entire own episode because that's such a huge discussion but whenever i was watching your video uh and getting your whole examination of this i kind of saw a bit of Henri de lubach's thought more or less influenced in 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 the way that you saw things not totally but there's some, some oh similarities. well i'm curious to hear that aspect of it um uh, now, what just one more curious question before I think I'm presenting my view first. But um, what do you think of Aiden Nichols? He's obviously mm -hmm. an OP. Uh, he has three texts defending Vatican II. I have them here. Uh, do, what do you think of I, Have you read much of Aiden Nichols? 
I have not, to be honest. No, if is Aiden Nichols, I think the only work that I've been exposed to him, but it's been cursory is I think he's writing a set of essentially, they would be like a modern equivalent of dogmatic manuals. Is that, right. is that the same individual? I think so. I, I, he um, is extremely prolific. I mean, th so if, if anyone's not heard of Aiden Nichols, first of all, for his trad credentials, he did sign on to the accusation against Pope Francis for the De La Cat heresy. So he signed on to that. And that was shocking to many because this person is widely acclaimed really everywhere. All, all the most serious faithful Catholic academics he publishes in Communio as an OP. He also published in the uh, the recent trad academic journal, which which set us up the which just started mm -hmm. recently. Um, and he, he is extremely prolific. He, he writes, uh, he's a ton of texts. Um, I've read m uh, some of his treatments on Eastern. He does a bunch of Eastern Catholic stuff, too. Um, mm -hmm. And that's the main stuff that I've read um, from him. And he's just a very, very careful scholar. Uh, he, he's just a very good Thomist. Uh, so mm -hmm. that's why I was wondering. Anyways, um, so do you want me to summarize my viewpoint first? Is yeah, that how we'll do it because I want to be respectful of your time. We'll have you summarize your point, and then I'm going to summarize my point. And then for the audience who is out there, the big thing that I'd like you guys to do is rather you can, of course, if you're watching this live, type away in the chat, but particularly write down questions that you might have for us in the comment section so that this discussion can continue because remember this is our first kind of broad discussion on ecclesiology people will need to understand also that this video is very much so going to be somewhat of my response to a video you guys all should go watch i think tim is pulling it up but it's over here at the meaning of catholic it is called eucharistic ecclesiology the meaning of catholic it is a uh, kind of a long video by uh, tim's standards i would say i'm long-winded but tim knows how to cut things a little bit short so but yeah go and watch that video we'll put the link in the description etc um so yeah so go ahead and begin with your kind of opening if you will uh, or summation sure. of your thoughts so, and then yeah, i'll give so you I'm, yeah i'm just going to be really brief so that cavazos can have most of the floor basically so if you search eucharistic ecclesiology this is an hour-long video in which i assert that eucharistic ecclesiology is the source and summit of the meaning of catholic so obviously it's a propose to the the name of this whole apostle. Mm -hmm.